Well, hey, y'all. We uh, are in a new chapter of Acts, Acts 5. Uh, we'll be going through verses 1 through 12. And uh, as for every week, would our reader be willing to read? Sure. <laughs> Starting in uh, verse 1? Uh, chapter 5, verse 1 through 12. Okay. <clears throat> now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. And then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not just lied to human beings, but to God. Mm -hmm. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. And then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, Tell me, Sapphire, is this the price you and Ananias paid got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. And Peter said to her, How could you conspire to test the spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. Mm. And at that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. And then the young men came in and, finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people, and all the believers used to meet in Solomon's colonnade. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. So we have quite um, some severe reaction to what these two folks did, um, and there's, there's some really interesting questions that these verses raise, uh, but before we get there, let's hit some basics. So, who do you see as God in this passage? How is God mentioned in this passage? The Holy Spirit, right? Who else? He executed the judgment. Right, Peter. No? I don't know if Peter knew that that was going to happen. When in the Old Testament, when Abel <coughs> was judged, the people had to execute the judgment. But in the church, right. God is executing the judgment. Right. And that's not our job. Right. Right. And so God is mentioned. And so we're, we're seeing that uh, it says that he lied to the Holy Spirit. It also says he lied to God. Mm -hmm. um, and then it mentions a little bit later the spirit of the Lord. Um, now there's there's a whole lot of people mentioned in this scripture. Ananias and Sapphira, Peter. We've got uh, the young men. The young men who cared about burial. Um, it mentions that they lied to men in general. Mm -hmm. It mentions all who heard what happened, and that implies that it's outside the church as well. It also mentions the whole church, mm -hmm. as well as all the believers a little bit later. Mm -hmm. And it mentions the apostles. And it mentions people. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty broad spectrum of, of uh, people that's being talked about in, the, in this passage. Um, what sin is it that we should avoid in this scripture? Well, lying, for sure. Lying Whoa. to anyone in particular? Yeah. John? I see this all about a heart issue. That's what we're looking at here. Yeah. And what's unusual is that 
it's worded that Satan had filled his heart, not yeah. that he was tempted and fell. So you wonder if he really was a believer. In fact, he wasn't disciplined, he was killed instead. Normally, right. a believer might have been disciplined now. He was killed instead. He was killed instead. So I think with sin, it's a, it's a major heart issue. Right. Mm. Um, we're going to touch on that in just a little bit, because that's, I think, an important aspect of this. So lying was definitely... Bridget? So I see that um, deceit, which will be the lie, mm -hmm. but what caused the lie was pride, because he right, wanted right. to be seen Amen. more than he was doing. Exactly. Right. Greed. 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 Um, on the flip side, what promises... Uh, can we keep from this passage? That God will use even these kind of circumstances to bring about revival because it actually stirred people's faith. This terrible circumstance actually stirred people's faith in a very positive way. Excellent. What else? There's consequences to our actions. Mm -hmm. Right? I think it raised a respect for the Lord. Yeah. Um, my mom used to say, you know, it just seems like every generation respects the Lord less. Mm. Mm. And it helped raise that respect there to realize, you know, you don't just do whatever you want to do. You know, there's some guidelines. To yeah, when it talks about uh, they had fear of the Lord, you know, those <clears throat> that didn't have a real good relationship with God probably did have a whole lot of fear from this. But those that had a real relationship with, with Christ, they had a, a better respect for who he is out of this. Exactly. Yeah. The thing about that is, it seems to me, it says great fear. Mm -hmm. we're, this kind of fear that they were having was not the fear of God, let the fear of God be with you. That's not, that, that kind of fear is healthy respect. This says to me that they were scared to death. Not only that, but they didn't get over it because three hours later, here comes the bride. And she comes in and says the same thing, you know, that this is what we did. And so Peter says, is this the price you got? And she said, yeah. And he said, no. How could you conspire? It says the spirit of the Lord. And so, and the guys came back in and boom, she dropped and died and they took her out too. And mm -hmm. then it says again in verse 12, great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about it. So that's twice in three hours that they get this tremendous shock mm -hmm. of somebody just boom, dropped dead right in front of them. Right, and, and, and again, I don't, I don't think, if we have a true relationship with Christ, I don't think that's going to cause us to fear. I think that will cause that respect. But those that don't have a good relationship, it's going to cause them to shake in their boots. You're right. Mm -hmm. But it sounds like there were a whole lot of people. Yes. Shaking, shaking, in shaking in their boots. Right. Um, yeah. You were asking about what promises. Right. In Isaiah 6 and 1, it says, In the year that King Uzziah, done some awful things. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. After the sin was gone, mm -hmm. I saw the Lord. After this was <clears throat> taken care of in the church, they had mighty things happening. Yeah. You know, it mm -hmm. kind of right. looks to me like they're mm -hmm. God cleaned house. Now, okay, now yeah. we can get some things. Right, right. right. Open right. the doors. Yeah, that's you good. Know, um, I was just going to say, it's interesting you mentioned Achan, the sin of Achan. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, because there is a parallel yes. between this and that. And, and Israel had just gone over yep. and got, and, and it, it's a, actually a second battle, uh, that kept back the things that were dedicated to the Lord. He lost uh, the uh, He held back the things and kept them for yeah. himself. Mm -hmm. and, God had to judge it, but he had it judged by the people. And I yeah. thought that was an interesting point. Yeah, he had the for people sure. judge. Right. But then in this, under the under the new covenant, he had he judged 
in himself. Right. Yeah. And I just think it's uh, how the church is, it, it, you, and you made that point, uh, Deb, uh, how the church is not to carry out that's judgment. Right, right. right. God. Yeah. And it's yes. the new covenant that carries out the judgment. Right. Things happen in the church. God says, I see it. Right. And uh, yeah. he, he carries out that. It's interesting that that's one of the fulfillments of Jesus coming, fulfilling the law and the prophets, that the people no longer judge, that he judges. That's mm -hmm. right. And hence the, the commands, the top two commands, love God and love others. Right. That's what he's called us to do. Right. Well, well, actually, they, they, we do... Do judgments in the church. We, we uh, things happen in the church where you people get thrown out, and, and we're to do that, you know, and we're to keep it uh, pure. There's things going on, and they approach by one and the other, and the church gets together and you say, "Hey, you don't change, you're out." And so we can do that, but not capital punishment, not right, not the, the right. this kind of punishment that is reserved for God. And right. we're not supposed to go to the world to do it. When right. David right. sinned right. and he was given three choices, he said, let me fall into the hands of God. He didn't right. want to fall into the hands of right. the world. No, yeah, right. fall into the hands of an angry God. <laughs> there was a good sermon preached on that. It was a long time ago. John yes, it was. <laughs> Sinners in the hands yes. of the But <laughs> even in the church, like that example in Corinthians, he had told them to, to uh, confront this gentleman. But then afterwards, he told them to go back and receive him in love. So even though we do have to sometimes bring things for correction, yeah. the ultimate goal right. is to receive them back in love. Right. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Which, which makes you look at this situation in an interesting light because Peter could have said to Sapphira, your husband was just smote by the Spirit because he lied. <laughs> but that's not what he said to right. her. Right. Instead, he kind of, in a way, kind of sets her up, which, and, and I fully, I truly trust and believe that the Lord was working through Peter in this because the Lord was using this to draw people into a new depth um, of consecration with him. Um, otherwise, you know, why wouldn't Peter? Because everything, like you said, everything in the New Testament in regards to the church is to shepherd them back into where they're supposed to be yeah. not kill them no. um, but in this particular case he just literally says is this the price that y'all agreed on and it is significant to me that it is specifically lying I think like all sin appears to be equal right except for blasphemy against the Holy Ghost which makes you wonder if that's at least in part, what this is. This is saying, I do not believe in God's spirit enough to think that there will be any consequence about lying about what I'm giving to him. Right, so it's coming with an attitude. So let me take it back to Deuteronomy 6, 16. And there it says, do not test the Lord your God as you did it. Masa. And that's referring to an episode of the Israelites uh, from Exodus 17, 1 through 7. And um, so the, they're out in the wilderness, and the Israelites have already seen God do some incredible wonders, but yet they ask Moses, why has God brought us here? And they're complaining. So there's, their attitude is wrong. Now, interestingly, we just had a sermon about this, not asking why, but perhaps if they asked, what is God doing? And, and, and looked at it from a different light, but they wanted to just complain about it and be miserable. Psalm 95, 9 uh, talks about this very thing as well. So they're, they're coming with an attitude of <clears throat> disrespect to God. And that's the same type of attitude you see with Ananias and Sapphira. They come with their pride and want to get pat on the back and lie to everybody in the process and lie to God about it as well. And God's not having the attitude. He's he wanting a, a different type of attitude. Um, well, when you look at that, 
Is it okay to question God then? Right? Yeah, absolutely. But there's a different type of way to do it. In um, the passage with uh, Downing Thomas, he questioned God. And God kind of, Jesus led him through that and said, I wish you would have believed rather than have to have to see, but that's okay. Here's, here's how, how it is. Um, there's an interesting passage in Malachi 3. Verse 10 says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have room enough for it. Mm -hmm. So God says, test me. Now, a little bit, a few verses later in verse 15, it says, But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly the evildoers prosper, and even those who challenge God escape. So here, those who challenge God are questioning God. They don't escape, but they're coming with a different attitude. It's, this is the verse talking about evildoers and, and arrogant people. If you're coming with that arrogant attitude and a disrespectful attitude toward God, God doesn't put up with that, right? So it, it's the attitude that we bring. I mean, we see David um, several times in Psalms question God, but he was a man after God's own heart. He came with repentance. And looking um, for answers, not looking to lie. Um, and I'll add one more verse to this, uh, Hebrews 11, 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. If we're seeking him, there's, there's usually questions when we're seeking after something. Oh, for sure, yeah. But... In this passage, we're coming with faith. Whole different attitude behind it. No arrogance. Humility instead. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a, that's one of those fascinating questions in this, in this passage uh, in Acts is, is why were they disciplined so severely? And it came back to where their heart was. And John was saying that you know, Satan had a hold of them already. Mm -hmm. So Satan is the father of lies. Yes. yes. And so they were emulating his character, and that had to be dealt with very strongly. This is a baby church situation, and they couldn't let this slide. God couldn't let this slide. So he was rather harsh, you know, on how he handled it. But they were coming with deception, rebellion, lies. Mm -hmm. God wants to protect the unity that's in the church. That's, right. that's the key. And we, we've seen several times people come up against the unity that is in this very church. Mm -hmm. I remember one guy walking in on a Wednesday night Bible study, <clears throat> and he wanted to create dissension. As a matter of fact, there was a whole little powwow mm -hmm. right over here with men that were just wanting to talk to him. And we finally had to say, look, this isn't worth an argument. And this guy wanted to follow up and tell me I needed to be pastor that she wasn't qualified to be a pastor as a woman. He was here merely, you could, everybody could sense the, the, the spirit he was carrying here. But when we come together in humility, seeking God, right. and wanting to love people, and keep that unity, there's strength in that, and it rejects that type of attitude. And he had one email he sent after that, and never heard from me again. And that's usually the case with these cases of, of, of uh, spirit. spirit that has come that's against right. the unity of this yeah. church that it comes to nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, if we, if we focus on that spirit, mm -hmm. we can make that spirit a big thing. Right. But if we focus on Christ, yeah. that spirit comes to nothing. That's right. That sounds like a familiar story there, doesn't it? We can it? come with a teachable yes. spirit. Teachable that's good. Heart. Yeah. And agree yeah. with God. We can question God. Yeah. I mean, after all, we're just babes here. We're trying to figure everything right. out. And so we're going to have questions. But yes. when he tells us something, and it's in his word, by the way, then we have to agree with it. Right. right. And come into that unity. 
That's good. That's good, Diane. I've got a, a question. Can we backtrack for just a second? We were talking about in verses 5 and 10 about how they, how they came and just died on the spot. Right. Now, I'm new to this and all of the language, so I might be misreading this, but it sounds like it could be a possibility that they just chose to die because they felt so guilty in front of everybody. They because chose what? They chose to die. Because it says um, in verse, verse 5, it says, Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Right. And in verse 10, it said, then fell she down straight right, straight away at his feet and yielded up the ghost. Would that's like that's interesting. That's a really interesting perspective, Vince, because like the way it is worded, you know, we, we look at it as like God smiting, but from a certain point of view, the Bible says every knee shall bow. Right. Okay. And on some level, when they were called out, their flesh and the evil spirit that was within them mm -hmm. just ceased. Right. You know? Right. I like that. That's interesting. Um, when you go back to the Greek, it, uh, it actually says, having fallen down, he breathed his last. Mm -hmm. So this may be a play on, on, on using a phraseology there. Right. But either way, God said this, this right. we're done here. Right. Yeah. This attitude yeah. carries no further. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm going to take a minute and look at why they've decided to lie besides Satan and taking him over. I think it's twofold. You can hope they could scroll back some money, but mostly the appearance of them giving right. at the feet and the appearance of being something they're not. Right. Yeah. I think we see that in a lot of people today. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of practice. Right. Yeah. That's it. Well, I would just go back to verse 32. And all the believers were one in heart and in mind. Right, the right. The unity mm -hmm. thing I think that you pointed out so well. Uh, it, I think it's really <clears throat> important to maintain the unity. There, there was some bad, two bad people that were part of the right. group. I believe they were part of the right. group. They were in with them, obviously, because they were doing, but their heart right. wasn't right. But anyway, to protect the unity, the same way with Aiken. Uh, because they've just crossed over and now God was going to do something with Israel. You know, in a new land. They're now in the promised land. Yeah. And they had they, they had this spirit there in Aiken. Mm -hmm. And God said, we've got to clean it out. I think he does that. In order to maintain it, God would just start, the church would just start within its infancy. Yeah. So it really uh, needed that unified go forward thing in order for uh, the signs and wonders to happen and for the miracles yes. and for them to have everything in common to work together for the common good was absolutely essential. It beginning. was, but every age of the church, it's essential for that to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I think is, is evident here is the world would say, fake it till you make it. There's no <laughs> faking it. In, in a relationship with Jesus. Right, he right. wants us to be honest. He wants us to be humble. He wants us to be truthful. We, he wants to have a good, honest, transparent relationship with us. Right. And these two were going to try to fake it till they made it. And they didn't make it. And that, that brings us really to a good example to follow is that if you're willing to lie to, the, to God, to the church, then you've already made a practice of lying in the other areas of your life. It is so dangerous to lie. Mm -hmm. I, I know that people, like, they tell, you know, their kids or they, you know, they excuse things and they call it little white lies. There, I do not believe that there is such a thing as a good lie. Yeah. If you look fat in that dress, you look fat in that dress. I'm not going to tell you unless you ask me. But it is not okay to lie because by lying, you are tearing at the fabric of the reality that God spoke into existence. And that is what it is, right. you know? And so for someone to get to a place where they're willing to lie to this degree tells you that they've been, they've been practicing those lies for a long time. Right. And so the, the, the difference I see between right. confronting this wrong with conf confronting other wrongs in the church is that this wrong comes against the unity of the church and other wrongs can be handled within the realms of discipleship that the church and the members, us, the church, need to be doing anyway. 
yeah. in discipleship. We learn how to be a disciple, how to, how to follow Christ, how to obey him. And we teach other people to do that and teach them to teach other people. And in that discipleship, you can confront other things also. If the only time you talk to someone is when they're doing something wrong, mm. it's better you not say anything. <laughs> right. But if you're willing to be a disciple maker right, right, right. and talk to them about how to be a Christian, how to live for God, and how to be a disciple and disciple maker themselves, you have a, a wide open door, yeah. you have a relationship yeah. mm -hmm. for in which to do that. Yeah. And then it can be done very much in love. You know, with those that bring the, the disunity, that, that's something that we're seeing, and we, we need to spit that out. Right. You know, that reminds me, there's a scripture that says that love covers a multitude of yeah. sins. Yeah. So when you have that relationship, one, you're not so quick to judge. Right. And when you do, you do it in love. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's good, yeah. I, I believe in the church. Of course, that's why they have, God puts elders in the church, to, you know, to keep the unity of the body and to, to spot, and they have discernment of things, and then you can test the spirits, you know, and, they, they have those gifts and the elders is, it's the place of the elders to discipline if you will the, the, right. the body right. uh, not everybody and his brother but I think they're put in position and have that office in, in order to maintain the uh, order in the church mm -hmm. yeah. um, but to some degree though like we do that for each other all the time like outside of the role of elder just because some people have more knowledge of the word than others and some so it so when you're in walking together as a body you know there might be something you just don't know and so you're by submitting to one another as the bible says submitting to one another then we're recognizing well you know diane knows things that i may i probably don't know and then she might be able to reveal things that I didn't know, and I can receive that without having, you know. Yeah. I, I'm just talking about that. that in, in, in places of discipline, it would right. the, the leadership, you know, right. we have a problem. Right. Right. I mean, I've been there. Right, like in, <laughs> like in what we Bridget was talking about in Corinthians. Right, yeah, right. right. Uh, and, but you see why. To keep the unity. Right. You see why yeah. it's important to keep the unity of the spirit. When yeah. something comes against the unity of the spirit, that's where we're all encouraging right. each other. We are stronger together. Mm -hmm. And when something comes against the unity, it's coming against the strength mm -hmm. of the church, right. of, yeah. of us. Yeah. And right. we have a choice to accept that line and to focus on that or to not accept it and turn it away. Mm -hmm. And that's when we stay together and stand strong in our unity encouraging each other and keeping the strength of the spirit right and i think we, in the early stages of community i think that's why the consequences are so severe they were there in body but not in spirit oh mm -hmm. wow yeah wow yeah and one of the things that's uh it's become clear here is that god is aware of our motives and our thoughts yeah right. and so you know we can't try to, again, fake it till we make it because God knows that's an empty briefcase, you know? Mm -hmm. He understands that there's nothing behind that, that, that shell of the suit that you're wearing if the, if the attitude is empty. Um, can, can I? Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, the, in the world's eyes, the opposite of God mm -hmm. is Satan, but that's not true. That's not true, right? Yeah. The opposite of God. This is just adding to what Pamela mm -hmm. was talking about. The opposite of God is a lie. Think about it. Mm -hmm. Because He is true. Everything mm -hmm. He says is true. Mm -hmm. So the opposite. They were the opposite of what God was. That's good. Now, why they died? We may not know the ultimate of that until we get to heaven. Right. Because there's, you go through the scripture and there's people that committed as, as bad in our eyes a sin as they did, mm -hmm. you know. And 
So I don't know why. I do know that the what the results. And a lot of times when God steps into a situation like that, not a lot of times, all the time. Yeah. When he steps into a situation like that and cleans up a mess, it always has a positive result. And so right, when you right. look at the rest of this chapter, which we Absolutely. will see next week. <laughs> <laughs> that was good, Terry. She's got it. <laughs> um, the positive results from this. Yeah. And it, it carried on, not on, only through this chapter, but on into when you see Paul teaching. Yeah. He, he even makes the comment, he said, and I can't remember which epistle it is, but he says, let no man defraud his brother in any matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such. Wow. As we also have already told you about. We've told you, we've testified about it, and we've warned you about mm -hmm. it. So these stories had spread. Yeah. And, it, you know, so. That's pretty you cool. Know, it, the That's results cool. carried on through. Yeah. And it's still doing so today. Right. We're Amen. We're still talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're still talking about it. Um. I wanted to talk about another topic also, because um, I thought that was a too big topic, the attitude here, uh, coming against unity, but also giving was spoken about. And so I won't mention every uh, scripture, obviously, about, about giving, but there's, there's a couple that, that kind of wrap it all up. In First Chronicles um, 29, 14, we read, but who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. So we're, we're everything comes from God. And then for uh, Second Chron uh, Second Corinthians, chapter nine, verses six through eight. Remember this: whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give. Not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Right. And obviously, these two that we were just reading about next weren't giving. Um, they had decided something in, in their heart that was against the spirit, and they weren't really cheerful about it. They, were, they had ulterior <laughs> it does, motives. It definitely did not yeah. feel cheerful. But, um, <laughs> but God has. Um, we have we have a giving church. Yes, um, I, amen. I, I think I think uh, um, by and large, the members of this church understand that everything we have comes from God, and that we're giving a portion back to multiply His kingdom, and God does amazing things with that. For sure, amen. amen. And so, um, you know, it. Uh, I, I've had the question so many times the past two years. Well, how are you guys doing? You lost a lot of people. God's got it. Yes. Yep. Every time. Yes. We've never had to worry. God's got it. He understands um, the spirit of this church and understands the work that we are doing here. And God blesses it. Yes, he does. And Thank you, Jesus. Let that be encouragement to each of you that you are in a body that is blessed. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's not a better place to be. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank but, you, Jesus. Senator, yeah. Um, you were talking about sowing and reaping, and we don't know what kind of seeds they had sown. Mm -hmm. We do know that three hours had passed before she ever came in. And you think about it. That it, it as Brother Terry said, it had already been said that great fear had come on everyone that mm. heard these mm -hmm. heard these things. So the, the rumors were passing fast. Yeah. It was it was rolling, yeah. but she had not heard a thing. No. Mm -hmm. The Lord did not let her hear yeah. anything. Yeah. So <clears throat> there was some reaping that had to happen there, and so we don't know what all seed they had sown besides just the the lying seed. We don't know. Oh, that's a what good kind point. of shopping spree yeah. was she on? Yeah. yeah. No kidding. But you know, I think of that. He tells them, was it not yours before you sold it? Right. Right. And right. was it not yours after you sold it? So right. they could have just as easily given the same amount. And, and it chose yes. to be honest about it right. and not let our pride yep. stand in their way. That's right. Yeah. 
That's right. That's a really good point. Yeah, yeah Bridget makes such a great point. No. Right. Mm-hmm. No. Right. The more obligated. Right. It's not like they had to give it to you. No. No. This is a, this is a lot of been planned for a long time. It wasn't like to spur a moment kind of thing. Presenting yourself differently than you really are to others. All right. But it's really tearing down your own character, your own self. We, we've all known stories where people believe they're wise after a while. Yes, they, they do. Yeah. They just act differently, or you know, they're emboldened, or they're whatever. But, so you're, you're not only presenting something to others, this is different than, say, greed or even adultery or something. Right. It's just, this is an inner character thing. Yes. Uh, but you're you're really affecting your own. You know we have to be truthful. The Holy Spirit is truth. God is truth, and, and so obviously that's what God is trying to do too. Yeah. Teach that, but it's it's so detrimental to ourselves yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not just money. It's right. About, it, it's about your head. Presenting yourself as yes. somebody you're not right. spiritual. Right? Yeah. Yet you're a, some kind of real spiritual being. You must walk with God. Mm-hmm. You must be super special because that's what you're wanting to appear as. Yeah. But you know, but that, that was not that was not what they were condemned on. No, no. no. Because when you look at um, Simeon in the city of Samaria, yeah. um he showed himself as the great power of God. He bewitched them, oh, yeah. the Bible said. But yet he was offered salvation. Mm-hmm. You know, he showed himself to be something that he wasn't. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I don't know what the difference here is. Well, you know, why this one was judged the way it was. And others later were not. It, it's a matter of pride. I don't know why God judges uh, you know, one different than the other. I go, God, they deserve worse. What are you doing? You know, I've done, I've said that yeah. about the situation. But the thing is, I think it boils down to in both cases, pride is involved to be something. You know, to, to appear to be and not. Uh, North Carolina motto, I love it. You come back to yeah. Essex Long we die. Yeah. To be rather than to see. I yep. learned that in the fifth grade and I never forgot. That's I good. My fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Trott. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's true. <laughs> Yeah. And, and there is a link. I, I truly believe there is a link between pride and lies. Because as, as Diane and Sid have pointed out, right. is that what you're trying to do is you're trying to refabricate. You're trying to fabricate. That's what a lie is, a fabrication. Okay? You are essentially fabricating a world in which you look better. Mm-hmm. That's what pride does. Yeah. Is pride says, I am better. Pride says, I can exalt myself against the one true God. Well, that was the sin, right? That was the sin. That was the original sin because that's essentially what man and woman did when they said, I can eat of this fruit even though the one God said that is the one thing I am not to do. Pride says, why can't I? And believing lies fabricates a reality in which it says I can the Tower of Babel, right? Satan. Satan. Right. Yep. So when we look at the examples and the commands to, to follow, the, the, to keep from this, we see examples in, in, to, to give, of being honest, not lying, of confronting wrong, of respecting God, of obedience. Amen. Obedience, better than sacrifice, right? Yeah. Um, of fellowship and of unity. And, you know, there wasn't, interestingly, a lot in that sin to avoid. It all came down, basically, to lying and and pride. But there is so much uh, positive that we can see in this really odd 12 verses. um, That 
is a great example for the church to follow. And uh, there, there's a, a K that we've been added on um, to our spec. Instead of SPEC, we, we're, we've been doing SPECK. And so we've been adding, adding knowledge of God. So let me ask, what knowledge of God do you gain from this passage? Or do you see in this passage? His justice? His justice. He's going to deal righteously with his church. Mm. His righteousness, right? He is supreme. He knows everything going on. Right. <laughs> right. He can't He's not surprised. <laughs> I, I would say his love, because he loved that church enough to root that out. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. His love. Um, I think also, um, you know, we are, as the church body, we're supposed to be fruitful. And everything that they did in that went against the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah. You know, it went against the love. It went against the kindness. It went against the, uh, the long suffering yeah. and the temperance. And, you know, it just yeah. went against. It. And, you know, the Bible talks about God cursing the fig tree. That's essentially what happened there. Right. Mm -hmm. Nothing good. Yeah. Nothing? Yes. <clears throat> All right. Um, any last words? Yeah. We always presume that we've got time. Mm. Um, I remember Sister Douglas having the ladies in here when we used to have our prayer meeting praying about a situation and that people would not be waiting, that they wouldn't think. And we look at this and we think, oh, he just took Ananias and Sapphira like that. He can take any of us at any time. And if we're submitted to him, that's okay. Um, he, he did that because opposition from outside usually grew the church. It was the inside mm. division that always tears apart a church. Wow. Um, but I have to wonder, knowing about the, the whole manner of sin shall be forgiven, but blasphemy the maid, and then 1 John where he says, if any man see his brother in sin, which is not unto death, so there's a sin that's not unto death, and then, um, oh, what was the other one? Um, talking about communion. For this cause many yeah. are weak and sick. But, well, it says, He that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. So, uh -huh. where are Ananias and Sapphira? Did he just take them and they're with him? Are we just presuming that they were damned forever? Well, um, that's not a question that really is for us to decide. Right. right. But, but um, think I think that, a, a you know? good point here is, especially in the last two years, it's very obvious that we don't know our days. Yep. Mm -hmm. And any one of us could be gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, um, what is our fruit? Are we discipling like he's asked us to, and like he's commanded us to? That, that, that command went to the disciples, and so they're supposed to go out and make disciples and teach them to make disciples. So that includes all of us. So are we making disciples? And that's a good question to be asked. Mm -hmm. So um, there's a challenge for the week. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder, God knows exactly where we are. Yeah. And our viewpoint, how good is the same? How good is different? Right. 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 Yeah. I had another thought that I wonder if and how long God might have been dealing with Ananias and Sapphira right. before. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe he mm -hmm. was right. trying to give them opportunities to come around and whatever might have been going on. I just have a feeling that. 
Yeah. There could have been a whole lot of more motives that they had that caused this to happen mm -hmm. that we'll never know about. But um, we do know that he knows our thoughts and he knows our motives. God's and he's just. just. And he's just. You know, it could have also been that this wasn't the first time this happened to these people. They made it <laughs> yes, you're right. part of a pattern. <laughs> and they finally hit the big one, you know, and sold this chunk of land. That's right. Hit the big one. <laughs> yeah. They crossed the and wrong said, guy. Hey, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just keep, them, keep, right. them, keep that for ourselves. Yeah. And we'll just give them the, the usual. Right. You know, it's like the people who go to church, and they're so religious and so faithful they put a dollar in. A dollar. Okay? Now, all right, if you only made two dollars this week, then that's awesome. Then that's a good thing. It's an awesome thing. Okay. I mean, I grew up that. I grew up in that. We lost it. Yeah. That's the way it does. Of course, they do have three collections. <laughs> right, to be fair, they do have three collections. All right, before we get off the song of bad thing too far. Yeah. <laughs> be careful of the dollar you're getting. All right, be careful of the dollar you're getting. Thank you, Jesus. Um, and if you're filled with the Spirit, there isn't room for Satan to come. That's oh, right. that's, good. that's good. If you're filled with the Spirit, there's not room for Satan. Right. Whose spirit do you carry? Right. I like that. I like that. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, why don't we uh, close this in prayer. Lord, thank you so much for, uh, again, just showing us so much in your word and giving us nugget after nugget to, to chew on this week. And um, examples of how to follow you, how to love like you love, and how to disciple like you disciple. Lord, anoint each of us through this week. Um, speak through us, help us to see the opportunities and possibilities around us, and help us to be bold in what we say and do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, yeah, that was good. So.